Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. On this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this kind of an image from a normal color photograph. It's called a high key image and I've seen these images around for years and I always wondered what the heck were they and how they do them and what are they called and I recently found out so now I've got something to show you and I think you'll enjoy this because it's a really neat technique and it's fun and it's fairly quick. So let's get rid of this and get our original. This is the original we're going to do. Now the first thing you want to do is create a black and white image out of this. Now I, I urge you to use the uh, the mode grayscale command because that still gives you access to the history brush later in the technique which you may want to use. If you use desaturate your history brush won't work. And uh, just, just a warning. Now um, I, so I want to show you something else too. I'm going to do the grayscale. This is the histogram for this uh, for this image. You can see it's clumped a lot of black hair, a lot of midtones as they go more and more and more up to the whites. Uh, at the end, the histogram is quite a bit different. So we're going to go back and uh, redo the grayscale. So there we go. Now the next thing we want to do is hit the Control M or Command M to bring up the curves dialog box. And what we want to do is is take make this as white as we can. So we do that by clicking here and moving that up. And you can see that that's, that's pretty good. You know, I just kind of dumb luck I got one the, the way I wanted it to be. Because the color at the end, her face is going to be pretty much what it is here. You may make a few adjustments like to get rid of these little shadows under her eyes, but uh, other than that, we're okay. Okay, so there we go. We've got that much done so far. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this background. And we do that and I'm lucky I've got just a, an uncluttered background on this one. We do that by using the always popular high, highly used dodge tool. And up in the top here you've got the, the range what you're going to choose to do it with. You've got shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm choosing shadows and I've got the exposure at 100%. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to take care of all this stuff. Get rid of it. And with my Wacom pen and uh, I'm using it in Tools 3 by the way. And I'm just going to pause this, finish this off, and then I'll come back and we'll show you uh, uh, how to finish it up from there. Okay, so just hang on. Hello, I'm back, and uh, this is where it was when we left, and I did some dodging, and this is where it is now, right here. Okay, so now we got an awful lot of black left to deal with her hair, her shoulders, so let's let's fiddle around with them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the exposure of the uh, dodge tool down to about 35-40%. And because I'm using a graphics tablet, uh, a Wacom tablet, I've got this set for other dynamics and it's going with pen pressure. So uh, that's the way we're going to set up. Now what that means is I press harder, it gets, it takes away more. The dodge tool will take away more, up to the maximum of 37%. So now I'm just working around in the shoulder here, as you can see, um, around the hair, just at the edges. And as I come in, I'll press a bit harder. There we go, get all that done. And if you leave a little bit like down here, it becomes kind of like a ghosty part of the image. And um, I don't know if I want the shoulder in because it looks kind of weird. It looks like a hook hanging off the edge there, so I'm going to take it away. There we go. And try and get it symmetrical if you can, or, or not. This is a technique that is entirely to your taste. See, what I think looks great, you may not like. And what you think looks wonderful, I may think it's just it's just awful. So it's 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 something that you have to find your own space with this one. And we're coming around the edges there. Let's see here, it's coming along nicely, isn't she? And there. Okay. Now, now what you see here is that uh, the things that stand out now are her eyes and her eyebrows. You may like it this way. And the original one I showed you, her eyes were quite uh, quite dramatic. What I'm going to do is zoom in on her eyes. I'm going to take my uh, dodge tool, make it a bit smaller, and we're going to take care of this under here. This is those shadows. I don't want to think she has bags under her eyes. She's far too young for that. And I'm just going to go around the eye here and take some off the cheek and the forehead. There we go. It's coming along good there, and a bit off the nose, and under this eye, and around, and maybe 
we take some off the eyebrows as well. Now her eyes are still quite dramatic. And I think I'm going to take some off there. There we go. Okay, let's see how we are now. Hey, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Uh, we'll get under here. Bigger brush. I don't want to get those lines of demarcation here too big. Get around there. So it's it's as I said, it's a it's your own personal preference, what you think looks good. Okay, so as I'm fiddling up, I'll just tell you some other things you can do with this. Now, remember I said you want to take it into a grayscale, right? If you decided that something you've done doesn't look good, well, you can take your history brush and you can fix it because you can go back in time. So let's get over here. Um, I can't stop doing this. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's our history brush right here right there. Okay, now if I wanted to, if I say, okay, look, I've done too much on the hair and I want to bring it back, you just brush it back in again with the history brush. And uh, there. I mean, you could do the whole picture. You go right back to zero and start over again. But I think I will just take care of the undo history brush. And uh, one more thing I want to do. She's kind of getting, uh, it's almost looks like a little unibrow here. So I want to take that out too. There we go. Okay, now let's see how it looks. Come on. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. That one eye is a bit dark. Again, it's a, it's a personal preference, right? You may think, oh, no, 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 that's the way it should be. But uh, I, I want it a bit lighter. So that's how you create a high-key image. Now, you can do this on anything. Um, I did it on my new puppy, uh, Tabitha. And that's a, it's a picture of her before and after on my website. Um, portraits are perfect for it, especially females. Um, I don't know why, maybe just because they're very nice to look at. Uh, I did a motorcycle the other day. I was I was so captured by this technique, I thought, oh, I'm going to try this on a motorcycle. And sure enough, it looked good too. So that's it. That's how you create a high key image. Now, the last thing I was going to show you was the histogram at the end. Remember the first histogram? It was all clumped up here. It was here, down, and up again. Now there's n there's no blacks. It's all grays, midtones, and and whites. So there you go, a high key image, and I think it looks pretty good. And uh, I hope you give this a try. Let's bring the eyes back a bit here. I hope you give this a try and enjoy it because it's a great technique and it's fun to do. And if you do this for somebody, they're gonna think you're a hero or a heroine, depending on on where you sit in that uh, continuum. And uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed this because it's been fun for me to do it and it's just a, a really neat technique. So I'm just going to go off into the distance here continuing to play with this photograph and you can go and grab one of your own and give it a try because you'll really enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching and uh, give my site a visit someday www.thegraphicstablet.com Thank you and good night.